There's a new season upon us, and that means it's time to sow the seeds that will grow into a new batch of beautiful plants. And though I may not be around to enjoy those trees by the time they've grown, I know that my descendants will cherish them for generations to come. And frankly, that's all I need. What are you doing? Well, I'm planting the seeds so they grow into new trees. New trees? What do you mean new trees? Why do you need new trees? You got a problem with us old trees? Is that what you're trying to do, huh? No, no, you're all great. I just think it's time for something new. Who needs variation? Why change something when it's already good? I think he just wants to replace us. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. take that, take that, take that! Okay, yeah. okay, no more new trees. Good. Let's vow to never change anything. Ever. Are you gonna? Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought you were. I mean, I can if, if you want. Un unless you really want to do it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> right. Hey guys, welcome back to... Actually, you do it. I was hoping you'd change your mind. Welcome back to our new season of The Blurb. I, I mean, The Agenda. <sighs> I'm your new host, Kyle. I mean, Co Colin. <laughs> He's Kyle, not me. Is it hot in here or is it just me? As you may have noticed, some things have changed. For example, we're now standing. And there's a curtain. And there's new hosts like Colin. That's me. We're going strong, Colin. We got this. <laughs> it's really getting hot in here. <sighs> it's really cold in here. New season is going to be really good. Like, really good. Because you get to see my beautiful face. And Colin's beautiful face. That's what I said. That's what she said. That's not right. I can't do this anymore. Neither can I. Just start the damn show. My name is Joe French, divorce attorney and used car salesman. Do you need a divorce? Call me. Oh, you've just been pineapples. <laughs> Nerd, moron, freaking loser. You've been pineapples. You thought you were going to sit here? You were going to watch your little pixels, watch your little videos? No. How could you be so careless? You've been pineappled. I am here. Like this. Pineapple. Ah. Pineapple. Ah. Pineapple is life. Get that? Pineapple. Pineapple. I want you to know that you ever, if you ever, ever feel safe, remember, I'm still out there. Hey, welcome to the agenda. Before anything, I should inform you to stay away from the sarcastics. The sarcastics? Who are they? They're like agenda royalty. They practically rule the show. That one there is Adriana. She's not very bright, if you know what I mean. Adriana, do you have your mic on? My what? No, Micah's over there. Not Micah, your microphone. What? You have to be more specific. Oh, I get it. Kent read, Kent write, Kent state. 
Except she's not joking, and she's in the honors college. Oh, wow. Oh, and that girl next to her is Bella. She's totally rich. She was voted most likely to secretly take over the agenda. I have this idea for a live bit where we all dance around in money. Benjamin Franklin's only. Okay, but where are we going to find that money, Bella? <laughs> what do you mean? My dad invented black squirrels. That's the best idea I've ever heard. Who's Benjamin Franklin? Is he the camera guy? <gasps> Hi, Benji. An evil takes human form in Colin. How do I even begin to describe him? You think Micah and Darian run the show? Well, Colin really does. He has people write the funniest sketches for him, and he even has a contract to be in the most bits. Hey, Ella. Come join us. Hey! Hi! Hey! I saw your audition, and you're, like, really funny. Thank you. So you agree? What? That you're, you think you're really funny? Oh, I don't know. Don't worry. You're going to love the agenda. It's so fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen, Bella. Oh, and by the way, on Thursdays, we wear pink. Pink. Noted. This is going to be an interesting season. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers, and a big welcome back to the oldest current member of the agenda, Faye Fosbender. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. It's great to be here. Faye is a senior, so she's the oldest person on the show. And for some reason, she's here to share some fresh perspectives and hot takes. Her idea, not ours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I am a senior, but I'm not irrelevant yet. <laughs> Essentially, being a senior just means I can legally purchase alcohol, and I'm smarter than everyone here, so let's fire this cannon off. You're welcome. Ah, she hasn't changed. Well, Faye, how about you tell us about how you've been doing lately? Yeah, sure. So, like, I don't know if anyone else can relate, but, like, since COVID, things have been a little different. <laughs> like, can we all just admit that? Can we all just admit it? Things yeah. are not the same since COVID. I mean, you're not the first to say that. That's more of like a lukewarm take, but go on. Yeah, you just don't understand comedy, but that's fine. Um, well, as we know, COVID is a germ. I'm a STEM major, so I can confirm that that is factual. And I don't know about any of you, but I have been such a germaphobe since COVID. Like, ooh, icky germs. That is so me. <laughs> like, get this, you guys. Let me know if you're on this level of clean freak or if I'm just a Virgo. <laughs> I'll even wash my hands after I take a piss. What? That's me now. I'm sorry, you just started washing your hands after you pee three years ago? <laughs> I know, I'm so overkill. Like, now I wash my hands instead of just, you know, like running the water for five seconds. That's a normal amount of time, right? Um, and then just leaving the bathroom and making a comment about, oh, your hand soap smells good. <laughs> Works every time. Wow, she's just saying what we're all thinking. What a truly hot take. Do you have any Further other away, things what? you'd like to say with us? Remember, it's totally okay not to share. No, I have more to share. <laughs> okay, guys, let me know if I'm too woke for national television. <laughs> Can we talk about pronouns? Oh, God, please don't say something terrible. No, don't worry. As I've said before, I'm a medically diagnosed genius by a totally legit Romanian website, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I, for one, don't get these simple little people who will be like, I just don't understand why people need to have pronouns. I don't have pronouns, neither is me paw and poopy paw. I just don't understand that, babe. Like, you just don't get the English language. Am I right? <laughs> I never thought I'd say this without sarcasm, but you're actually onto something here. Thank you. Like, okay, babe, of course you use pronouns. They're literally a part of speech, you silly baby cookie cake. Like, even your Ford F-150 that you have a pseudo-sexual relationship with has pronouns. <laughs> okay. Sorry, pronouns for a truck? Yeah, like, people will be, I don't know, like, filling their trucks with diesel and then smack it on the car equivalent of an ass and say, ain't she a beaut? Like, I'm sorry, she's not really doing it for me. Like, she is for you, freak. Yeah, I 
I guess that is weirdly erotic for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and aren't those people the same demographic that say, pansexual means you're attracted to pots and pans? Like, no, I don't think you should be talking about that when we all know you're eyeing the tailpipe on your F-150 a little too hard, if you know what I mean. Okay, before this goes from socially conscious to just a little bit gross, Thanks, Faye, for sharing your insight with us yep. tonight. Yep, you're so welcome, and my opinions are always right, so. This is the story of Sophia, a courageous, weird young woman who has had quite the life, as we'll see in this scrapbook. Sophia was born on July 32nd, 18 AD, to two reptilian parents. Ah, look, the miracle of childbirth. How wonderful. Oh, uh, anyways, here is Sophia pictured with her reptilian mother. How adorable. And here she is taking her first steps with her father right behind her. Aww. And this was her first day of school. They grow up so fast. That was also the day she got hit by an ice cream truck. How tragic. The hospital stay after that was quite interesting, but she was okay. She went home and watched TV that very night. Wow, is she so strong. Here she is singing a solo at her first choir concert, but she was so scared that she puked right on stage in front of everyone. And then she fell off the stage too, also in front of everyone. She then subsequently flicked off the stage. I would do that too. Here she is with her new whip. What a great first car. At least it was great until she got hit by another ice cream truck. And then she graduated high school. What a smart fellow. But unfortunately, on the way home, she got hit by another ice cream truck. What bad luck she has. But then she got hired by the ice cream truck company to make some money. That is, until a rival ice cream truck hit her. What a life. That was weird. <gasps> ice cream! Welcome back to the agenda. Many of our old viewers may recognize the tune that goes by the name Funny Snake, created by our talented uh, entertainment director, Anthony Fariga. While just a simple tune, this person has taken their liking of the song to a new level. Please welcome a uh, fun e snake. What are you doing? Doop, doop. Oh, sorry. I thought that's just how we communicate nowadays. I guess TV2 still uses the ancient tongue to communicate. Uh, you mean actual speaking words? The future is now, old man. Okay, well, um, so let's talk about your obsession with uh, Funny Snake. Why Funny Snake? Okay, first off, it's not an obsession. Secondly, Funny Snake was like God coming down from heaven and blessing my unworthy ears. I knew from that moment forward that my life has become Funny Snake. I quit my job to dedicate my life to Funny Snake. And I donated all my money and belongings to the Funny Snake organization to worship our great snake. And you're sure you're not calling this an obsession? It's not an obsession! <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a very Funny Snake of me. Um, it's just that I'm so passionate about our Lord and Savior, Funny Snake, uh, do you actually want to buy a copy of the writings of Funny Snake? Oh, okay. Now I know. This is an obsession. <laughs> oh, you think this is an obsession still, huh? Well, if it really was really an obsession, would I kidnap our great ruler, Mr. Entertainment Director, to tell you all about all your non-believers about how amazing Funny Snake is? You did what? That's right. Now tell them about how you created Funny Snake as a message to all of us about our Lord and Savior and how he will arrive and grant us no college debt. What? You kidnapped me for this. I created Funny Snake as a silly song, not some sort, of, sort of message or whatnot. That's what you want us to think, right? You're actually telling us that within the simple melody is a secret message telling us about how to make quick cash. No, yeah? no, no. Funny Snake does not endorse a pyramid scheme. It's just a silly song. <laughs> You're joking, right? No, no, I'm not. Hey, um, where's my cake? I don't believe this. This has to be a bad joke, right? I gave up my life for this. I divorced my wife for the funny snake. Oh, too bad, so sad. Now give me my cake. <laughs> While funny snake is hit with this insane reality that his god 
is um, fake. Let's come back after this awesome dance break. <laughs> Def Glory. Yeah, look, uh, look at it go boop, boop, boop. Uh, what? I mean, what is, what is happening right now? I mean, it's just like, it's melting and then it's turning into metal. Like, I guess the, the real takeaway is, uh, why don't you just watch the agenda, please? Uh, pretty please. Um, it's at 9 o'clock on Thursdays on Kentwired.com. See you there, I guess. And welcome back to the agenda. And I come to you all with some unfortunate news. Truth be told, my co-producer Darian and I spent so much money on the show's redesign that, well, we ran out. We broke all the piggy banks, emptied our savings, and blew through the entire show's budget. I even didn't have enough money to keep paying my housing bill, and I unfortunately got evicted. So I've been spending my nights here at the studio. Um, anyway, I thought it would be appropriate to share with our like three viewers at home uh, what all of our budget cuts are. So for one, we now only have two cameras and one camera operator, meaning that camera one is always pointing at me just fine, and camera two always has me halfway off the screen. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. But yeah, oh, and our uh, green screen. Um, well, unfortunately, the green screen also costs money. And since we're out of cash, uh, the green screen system is actually just permanently stuck on this image that was uh, last displayed on it, which, as it turns out, is this poorly photoshopped image of Agenda cast member Joe Ziak meeting Super Mario during the apocalypse. Um, yeah, I don't even know why that was on there in the first place. But yeah, anyway, um, you may also notice that the monitor that's typically over here um, yeah, it no longer works, so to make do, we grabbed a piece of printer paper and we taped it to the front and just drew the Agenda logo. That should be all right. <sighs> oh, um, that one. And we can, yeah, we can also no longer afford IFBs, you know, those little like in-ear monitors that we were supposed to use to communicate. So now if our crew needs to talk to the cast, we simply just yell across the room. Oh, yeah, the desk. Um, yeah, you may notice that over here, there is no longer our desk. Um, instead, we actually just have this table here. Yeah, so turns out we actually just defaulted on our debt, and the repossession crews are walking in as I speak. Um, wait, 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 guys, no, no, don't take that. No, we need the couch. Come on, wh where am I supposed to sleep at night? I gave my life to this show. Screw you guys. Ugh. Well, guys, I'm not going to lie. This really sucks. We screwed up. On a completely unrelated note, if anyone would like to donate to my newly founded charity called uh, the Foundation of Agenda, that would be great. We could really use the money to support our cause in you know, our local community. So if you might want to consider donating, we would really What? What are you doing? Wait, what? I'm cut from the budget? No, 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 guys. Guys, please donate, help! Hey guys, welcome back to an, another movie review. Today, I'm actually going to be reviewing a, gr a record-breaking, groundbreaking, absolutely flawless movie. Uh, came out last year called Morbius. Uh, as some of you may know, it was nominated for you know every single Academy Award, and it's probably gonna end up winning all of them. I mean. That movie was just incredible. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but it was, I, I've seen the memes, and like, just the fact that it made 362 more billion dollars in the box office is just, y you know it has to be a good movie then. And then, you know, they tried to re-release it a second time because people just wanted to see it in theaters again because I heard that the IMAX was just, absolutely phenomenal but they had to get involved because there wouldn't have been any money left if people went and saw it again so they had to cap it off at eighty two thousand dollars which is a bummer because i was waiting to see it um yeah when when i didn't see that movie i mean i was just left amazed i mean every the the, the 
the highs of that movie. I mean, everyone talks about the one line, it's Morven time, which is, which, which was a great line. But I feel like one line that was really overlooked that is going to d go down in history is, is when uh, M Mr. Morb himself says, it, it wasn't about more be you or more be me. It was about more be us. I shed, I shed real human tears when he said that. I mean, it was just such a beautiful, beautiful moment. Yeah, that's, I mean, I'm getting emotional just talking about this now. I mean, that movie is just so good. I, I can't wait to watch it. Holy cow, what a great way to start this season off. Even if we almost fumbled. But you were there to save it. I saved it. I was overheating, and you kindly removed my flannel for me. Hey, listen, man. You are as much of an asset to this show as I am. I couldn't do this without you. You couldn't do this without me. Well, I wouldn't want to do it without you. I can't imagine being host with someone else. You know what? Every live segment you're on, you kill it. Every time. You're amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing. You are amazing. I mean, have you seen the Joe Finch skits? Absolute genius. Colin, I can only dream of making something as innovative as walk the plank. I walk the plank every day now. Kyle, you are so creative. And I'll never be as good as guessing the charades as you are. Prove it. Oh, you're an elephant. That's easy. That's right. Um, you're grating cheese. Yes. OK. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, you're the quadratic formula. Wow. How'd you guess that? Just like you said, I'm great at this. I want to do one now. OK. Are you driving 90 miles per hour in a school zone? No. Oh. <laughs> OK, maybe we do have some things to work on. But it doesn't matter, because you lighten up every room you walk in. When we go to your driver after this, after we go off air, I'll pay. But don't you dare leave the tip. Don't you dare do it, because I will leave the tip. 30% to be exact. You know what, Kyle? Your coconut shampoo smells great. You know what, Colin? Your weird glasses and chronic acne may make you look smelly and gross, but you are a very funny person. Whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm actually pretty insecure about that. I'm, I'm sorry, but at least you're funny. Sure, I, I am pretty funny. <laughs> All right. It's getting pretty late, so uh, we got to close the curtain. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. All right.